So this project's made out of 7 16th brass stock. This is the body of the pen. I'm making it around one of those uh, Fisher Space Pen cartridges that, uh, that a lot of pen buddies use. They've been around. They're designed for NASA. They'll, they'll write through grease and water and upside down and zero gravity and no pressure and a million degrees and all that cool stuff. And they, uh, they have a really easy design or shape to design around. So that was nice. So I'm drilling out the body of the pen right now. And I have to be sure to drill to a specific depth because it's not going to be a through hole. This is where the uh, body, the ink portion of the cartridge is going to rest. And it was actually just barely longer than the flutes on my drill, as you can see. So I just had to go slow and make sure those flutes didn't get packed up. The back end will be threaded, I believe quarter by 20, to accept just the, the tail cap that'll seal it in place. I'm saving these brass swarf chips, whatever you want to call them. You'll see in a minute. So as I mentioned, this is a Christmas gift for my mom. I made this along with a wooden display box that I, I, I just I didn't get very much of the actual display box on film, so I'm just not showing that. Um, but I made this last last month before Christmas, and obviously didn't want to put the video out before <laughs> before I gave it to her. But this is just uh, yeah. It's, Christmas gift. This side I'm drilling with a uh, eight inch drill bit. That'll be where the actual tip of the cartridge points through. This whole area right here, I'm turning down to a 3 8 nominal size. I'm going to turn this whole area down. This will be the part that goes inside of the cap that you can grip onto. I didn't have the change gears for my power feed set up, so I just turned it by hand. With brass, you can typically get away with that. These first few roughing cuts, the surface finish isn't the best, but the great thing about brass is that that's so easily correctable uh, via so many ways. So uh, brass is a super forgiving material, super forgiving, and it's, it's hard enough for a number of projects, especially the more decorative ones. It's easy to cut, and it polishes up, very nicely with with very little effort so it uh, it'll it'll really spoil you as far as material goes once I have it turned to the nominal uh, outer diameter of, of 3 8 right here we're gonna start with a thread relief and I'm going to be threading this portion of the pen and so behind the threads, before that shoulder of the body of the pen, I need to put a little groove so the threads can end, so there's not a expanding taper that would stop something from screwing all the way down. And then, in front of the threaded portion, we'll just turn it down, and this will be the actual tip of the pen. Is that the nib? I don't know. I don't know pen terminology. The mainsail, the gibbs. I'm turning, I'm turning to a, a, a basically another shoulder here, but you can see that little ring will be the threaded portion that I've turned to, and it's really only going to be about one thread, one complete thread for the 3 8 by 16. Now I've got my carriage locked in place, and I'm actually moving the tool back and forth on the compound rest, as you can see. So it's moving at an angle, and we're going to form the little cone. This will make the 
the tip, which will help her comfort and style. And this is another thing, this is actually very easy and rewarding compared to like turning the, uh, the stainless steel. You may have seen me in some of my other videos, like doing the suppressor baffles. This is great. This took no effort to make, make this little conical cut right here. And I'm actually doing a, a, um, two angles on this cone. So I did the, the first was, I believe, 30 degrees, and this one, I believe, is either 20 or 15. It doesn't matter. It's just a aesthetic thing, but you can see this one's a lot more shallow, a lot more straight. So those two angles kind of make it almost seem like a, like a subtle curve. And then we're just going to use a die. This cuts threads on the outside. I could have done this with the lathe in the thread cutting manner I've done before. But I had to, I happen to have the die, and it's basically kind of just as easy to use this die as it would be to use the lathe. So I just did. And that's where we're at after a little bit of polishing. Like I said, the the brass it doesn't take very much and just smooths right out. The end cap that'll hold the cartridge in place is pretty straightforward. I've got to turn down this shank to the nominal size for the threads. And like I said, they're quarter by 20, so I'm going to turn down this little area to one quarter inch. And I only measure it 50 or 60 times. It takes forever. Once we're there, at the perfect 0.25, now we start turning another portion. This will actually go inside the threads because we bored the pen out to, I believe, 0 0.200 or 0 0.21. So that's what this smaller diameter is, and that, that'll actually butt up against the actual cartridge. So again, once again, the actual threaded portion on this uh, the shaft, this shanked area, is, is shorter than the whole thing. And again, using a die because I just have one, and on these smaller threads, it's, it's generally easier. And brass cuts threads great. It takes no effort at all. Little oil. Um, I'm using the I'm using a tap uh, die holder in the tailstock just to follow this hand die holder because uh, one's a round holder and one's a hex holder. So yeah, that's that's. If you notice that there's two, that's why. That's all there is to that side of the end cap or of the end plug, I should say. And it screws right into the body, as you can see. That's how I'm holding the thing. I'm not even going to face off the end because we're just going to shape it. And using a file on the lathe, there are rules. One is be absolutely aware of where your hands are. It looks like my hand's a lot closer to the chuck because of the camera, but I assure you there's plenty of safety clearance there, but don't, don't be lackadaisical about that. And the second is use a file with a handle. If your files get caught on something and shoot back at you and it just has the sharp, pointy metal shank on it, like so many files do, that will go into your hand, and that's usually people think that's not good. So. But I'm just rounding this over. I've sped up the footage, but it really only took just a couple of minutes of rounding over on the lathe with a uh, a rough file, and then just polishing everything up, getting that uh, the brass comes with kind of a darkened finish, uh, patina or tarnish, whatever you want to call it. But just hitting it with some super super soft sandpaper and uh, Scotch Brite. And doesn't it look great? So that's basically the body of the pen with the end plug. So now all we gotta do is make the cap. One of the biggest things in the cap will be the giant hole that makes it a cap, not just a piece of brass. So we're gonna bore out the cap, and I'm not gonna go very much deeper than I absolutely need to be, so I've measured it out on my drill bit. And this is a drill bit, I believe it's 5 sixteenths, uh, which will allow me to then use a tap and tap it for the 3 eighths by 16 that's on the actual uh, nib of the pen, so the cap will screw on. And 
and you, I, I could have threaded this all the way. It's, it's really non, it doesn't really matter and consequential because, like I said, I only put one, basically one rotation of thread on the body of the pen, so there really only needs to be one solid rotation of pen on the inside of the cap for it to engage on. So uh, beyond that, it's, it would be just just for funsies. But here's how the body of the pen engages to the cap. Nice and tight and as straight as necessary. And just as I did with the plug, we're shaping the the the, the cap of the pen to have the uh, round over the little dome on it. There are dome cutters you can get for the lathe that uh, they're very ingenious, and it would be fun to build one someday. I, this is the most circle cutting, uh, sphere cutting I've I've done to date on it, so it's not not a high use item for me, but. It's very decorative, and it looks nice, and it's really not that hard on brass with a file. Steel would be a different story. But I'm polishing up the cap just as I did with the body, and this is just establishing kind of a, an initial polish just on the lathe using some high grit sandpaper. This right here is a piece of shim stock from a feeler gauge set. This is 12 thousandths of an inch, and I'm cutting it with the all-powerful Dremel tool. And I'm shaping it on my belt sander. This is going to be the clip of the pen. And you've seen it. I've got that blue dye on it. That was just so I could mark it out using my scribes. But uh, I'm going to shape this. And then the next thing we're going to do is heat blue it. This is why I saved those brass shavings, those brass chips. They act as an insulator. This trick I got from Chris at Clickspring. If you haven't checked out his channel, please do. I imagine, though, if you're watching mine, you've seen his. Using those as a bit of a heat sink or insulator to... to evenly disperse the heat. I'm using a propane torch and a little setup with aluminum plate between two chunks of steel. That's eh, probably dangerous, but, uh, eh, sue me. Please don't. But once the metal, the steel, is brought up to 600 degrees ballpark area, and it turns a very bright royal blue. And this is kept that way. Um, what, you stop the heat, obviously, once it gets to that color. And there it is. And it's very brilliant in person. Now, <laughs> this one, as you can see, it's not actually perfect. I ended up doing this two or three more times just to try to get it perfect. I just didn't do them on film. But it's not a difficult process. Uh, part, of, part of it is just cleaning it. Drilling the cross hole and then tapping it to attach the spring clip. And this was actually a little bit of an engineering challenge. I tapped it, and then I needed to create a screw that fit that tapped hole, and then I needed to create a spacer. So I did this on the lathe, and these are actually 4 by 36 threads, which is a very weird thread, a very small thread. So I turned down this little threaded brass screw on the lathe, and I could actually power tap it because it's so small and soft. And then making a little spacer, just out of, uh, basically out of the exact same piece of material, drilling it out so that it will have a clearance hole for the threaded portion, and then cutting it off. And then, to ensure that it fits up against the body of the pin uh, without any unsightly gaps, this was kind of a slow process of sanding it to the contour of the pen's diameter. Now to shape over the cap of that threaded screw that I made, or bolt, I actually held it in a, this is a tap holder. And so it's a small collet fixture, more or less, that I put in the 3 draw chuck of the lathe. It's actually pretty, 
pretty pleased with how that worked out. It felt relatively ingenious. Uh, again, filing it to a round on the lathe using an even smaller file. And then basically all I did was install it with the clip into the body of the pen through the spacer. And you can get a shot of that here. I didn't get a lot of the pen after I made it. Uh, this was hey, this was a Christmas gift from my mother. So I made the pen, and in this shot I was actually making a wooden box that's right here. And, uh, so, and I gave it to her for Christmas. But that's what the pen ended up looking like, all told. And so I, I didn't get a, a, a shot on camera of me fiddling with it or showing you the whole assembled piece. But it ended up coming out really nicely. I'm pretty pleased with it.